Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Bart, I'm a senior solution consultant for Adobe and today we'll be discussing how Adobe Document Cloud can help transform your business and basically make your life a lot easier. Now during this webinar I'll demonstrate how common tasks like the examples you see listed here can make your workflow a lot simpler by using Adobe Document Cloud's apps and services. But before we get into all of that, let's take a look at a couple of customer challenges first. Now, recent Adobe research showed that worldwide, 80% of document processes from admin to sales to legal departments still involve at least some paper. And there is massive pressure on organizations to transform to digital solutions. Um, but the problem is that these processes are still too reliant on paper documents and manual document processes, both in the back office and in customer facing capacities. Now we also learned that the ability to work from any location at any time was rated number one when it comes to highest impact on employee productivity and satisfaction. So this means that there's a huge opportunity here for mobile working. On top of that, 45% of CIOs interviewed indicated that their top priority includes innovating products and services while reducing costs. Knowing the challenges, let's take a look at the key impacts on the business of manual document processes. Now, research has shown that we're spending more than a third of our time on administration, which means that we're spending less than two thirds of our time focusing on our core job functions. Now, revenue is also lost when a sales cycle is interrupted by having to manually process paper or secure a signature. So all of this impacts the probability of a deal closing. As you can see here, 69% um, of the customers that we surveyed experienced excessive deal slippage, and 49% say their sales cycle is too long due to manual and paper-based processes. And don't forget that customers are also negatively impacted. When customers have to print, sign, and send, or maybe even fax documents, the impact is significant. So we have read reports where 77% of customers reported that automation gaps negatively impact their customer experience and 63% of customers say that document process issues negatively impact customer satisfaction. So these are all very significant numbers that may have customers looking for another solution. Now this is exactly where Adobe Document Cloud comes in. Now Adobe Document Cloud consists out of multiple solutions and uh, we put all the solutions here on this slide. For example, we have the desktop applications. So this consists of Adobe Acrobat DC and Adobe Acrobat Reader, both on desktop. So this forms the absolute core of what Adobe Document Cloud is. And then we have online PDF services. So these services allow you to do various things directly from a web browser, um, from a mobile application, or even from one of the desktop applications as well. So this could be, for example, uh, the ability to convert an Office document back to a PDF, uh, this could be, for example, a send and track service for sending large files to somebody. This could be various things. Then we have the e-signature solutions, which is covered by Adobe Sign. So this allows you to basically build your own electronic and digital signature um, workflow. Um, this could be done directly from the Adobe Sign solution, but we also have different integrations um, here as well, different APIs that work together with solutions like Microsoft Office 365, um, Ariba, uh, Share, um, SharePoint, for example, um, this can be Salesforce, et cetera, et cetera. We also have a list of mobile applications. Um, these mobile applications can do uh, various things as well. So examples are, of course, the Adobe Acrobat Reader mobile version on uh, the iPhone and the iPad and Android devices. Uh, you can use Adobe Fill and Sign. We have the new Adobe Scan application. So various different applications will allow you to work um, from home, you can work on the train, you can basically do whatever you want. Um, you can participate in various workflows or, or start various workflows just directly from one of your mobile devices. Of course, we also integrate with uh, several other workflows. For example, we have a native integration with Microsoft Office 365 products. I'll show you more about that in just a couple of minutes here. But know that um, these various building blocks, so the desktop application, the PDF services, e-signatures, and mobile applications, these four ingredients basically allow you to build up um, several different workflows that will best suit your needs. 
And then the integrations, which I've mentioned before, there are various APIs available that also allow you to natively uh, embed and integrate solutions like the Adobe PDF services and, for example, Adobe Sign as well in your existing uh, software configurations. And these business processes, improving these business processes, can be done across your entire organization. So here are just a few examples. So we have sales, we have human resources, procurement, and legal. So every single part, every single segment of your organization can definitely benefit from these digital workflows now. Um, so this is something that is very present within your organization. And I'm also convinced that most of your organizations or most of your departments within a certain organization will already be using other solutions like, for example, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, or maybe you're using SharePoint or Office 365. So because you already have these investments in, for example, Microsoft software, you can now also integrate these PDF services from Adobe as well, which will give you a lot of added value. Now let's take a moment to discuss Adobe and Microsoft's partnership. So Adobe and Microsoft have come together to help organizations deliver uh, exceptional digital experiences and digitally transform. So in 2016, we launched a strategic partnership that helps businesses transform through customer engagement with uh, Microsoft Dynamics and Adobe Experience Cloud. Now, last year, there was an announcement of an expansion to that partnership that also included Adobe Document Cloud and Adobe Sign, which is really interesting. We have several integrations in the market that let you maximize your existing investment in Microsoft and Adobe and accelerate the shift to modern cloud applications to your employees. For example, Adobe Sign is integrated into Microsoft Dynamics, uh, SharePoint, and Office applications, while Adobe Acrobat and online PDF services are integrated into SharePoint, OneDrive, and Office applications. Now, as a result of these integrations, customers can completely digitize their document processes, including collaboration, um, approvals, and signature steps, all within their favorite Microsoft applications. Now, let's take a look at an example here. Now, when integrated with SharePoint, PDF services provide a means to combine, uh, rearrange, and convert multiple documents into one PDF file. So in this example, I'll show you how you can combine several Office documents um, in this um, customer's legal and compliance folder to create a PDF package, okay? And that package can then be sent off to somebody else. So we're starting out here inside of SharePoint where we have selected multiple Office documents. So as you can see, we have two Word files, one PowerPoint, and one Excel file. So after having selected all four documents, uh, we can click the Combine Pages by Adobe tab at the top of the screen to start this process. Now, as you can see, this opens up the Combine Files window where I can rearrange different pages, I can even exclude certain pages, and I can basically set the order of how these documents should appear once they're merged into one single PDF document. As I made a couple of changes, everything looks good now. So I click the Combine button at the top right of the screen and then give this document a name. Now this is the final PDF package. This is a file that was directly saved into SharePoint. Um, so what we can do is we can scroll through the document from here. I can inspect every single document. Um, and I can also preview different uh, files as well. So in this example, this is what the original PowerPoint document looked like. And again, all of this is directly saved into SharePoint. I did not need to download all these documents first and then combine them into Acrobat just to re-upload them into SharePoint. Everything is just done online. When this document is finally created, you'll see it appear here inside of SharePoint directly. And once this is done, I can send this off to uh, my coworkers or my customer, for example, and can I get going with the rest of my workflow. Now, one of the first things I would like to share with you is a very common workflow that consists out of you receiving a document from a customer. Now, this could be a PDF document, but this could also be a hard copy that you just get in your regular mail. Now, whatever happens, the document that you receive is not interactive. So this could be a static PDF, for example, that was created from Microsoft Word, for example, or maybe Excel, or this could be something that you just receive in the mail. Now, if this document was already in PDF, then of course I could open this up on uh, via Adobe Acrobat DC, for example. I can fill out the document. 
But in this scenario, I'm going to take this one step further and I'm going to start out with a printed version of this document. So this is something that just appeared on my desk one day and for some reason, of course, it's not interactive. I have to fill this out and I have to scan this. Let me use a couple of mobile applications for this. So the focus here for this demo is mobile first. Now, looking at my iPhone here, I have a couple of applications that I would like to use for this. Now, I would like to use the Adobe Scan application to scan the document. I would like to use the Adobe Acrobat Reader application to inspect the information. And of course, I need a way to fill in the form or fill, fill in the document and also sign the document. Okay, and for this, I can use Adobe Fill and Sign just for that. So this is filling out a form and uh, signing a document electronically, or I could use the Adobe Sign application um, in case I want to sign this document digitally by adding a digital signature field myself. Now, I'm not gonna take it that far. I'm gonna stick with a regular form that needs to be filled out. This is a pretty, uh, pretty normal document here. Now, let me start out by using the Adobe Scan application here. So Adobe Scan is an application that is included in Adobe Document Cloud. And it basically allows you to scan, to capture and scan any document that you might have. Now, I'm just using my phone here right now, so I'm doing, I'm doing all of this um, live. So as you can see, this is a document that I just received here. It's a non-disclosure agreement. It's just a generic document I just downloaded online. And um, as you can see, there's a signature um, required here. There's a date and there's a print name as well. But of course, this is a hard copy and I do not feel like signing all of this manually and then having to scan this and then send this back because, you know, maybe maybe something is not legible in a document. Maybe I have an awful handwriting. I'm not really sure. So basically, I would like to convert this document into a digital version of that document. So what I'll do first is I'll just hold my camera like like this and I'll just capture this document and notice that it will automatically uh, detect the document here on my desk and I'll just tap this button to convert this document. Now, of course, I can capture multiple pages here, but for now, I'll just stick with one page. Now, notice that this was a regular uh, printout, which would, if you just take a picture or you just scan this with a regular scanner, this would give me a gray page. But as you can see, this is perfect black on white. And this is because Adobe Scan will um, detect all the text and detect the paper in my scan and it will convert that to proper black and proper white. So this will avoid you later printing this document out and it will just be one blur of gray ink on your paper. So this is perfect, um, uh, perfect black on white. Now, for now, this is okay. This is all I wanted. Of course, I can always crop this document if I do not like the perspective of it. But of course, all of this was done automatically uh, thanks to the Adobe Sensei technology, which is artificial intelligence. Um, I can rotate the document, I can add extra pages, but for this, this is more than enough. Let me just quickly um, give this a name, my NDA document. Uh, my keyboard is in Dutch, my apologies for that, but my NDA document. Now let me uh, save this PDF. Now this is a PDF that will now be saved inside of the Adobe Scan application. And now look what it does. It will automatically upload this into Adobe Document Cloud. And then the second phase, it will start recognizing all of the text. Now recognizing text is very interesting because it allows two things. Now, first of all, it allows me to search for words, okay? Because it will recognize all of these characters automatically. And also interesting is if you do this with say a business card like this one, notice the save contacts button here, because what it does is if I click save contact, it will actually um, find all the text inside of that business card and it will recognize the name, uh, the company, the website, the phone number, and it will automatically convert that into a contact profile that I can use and save on my phone, on my mobile phone. Now, let me uh, continue on with my non-disclosure agreement first. Now, what I can do is, of course, I can open this up in Adobe Acrobat. Let me just quickly hit the open in Acrobat button. And this will open up um, this document, this PDF basically here inside of Adobe Reader Mobile. Now, from here, I can do many things. I can start annotating the document, for example, but that is you know, beyond what I'm doing during this particular demonstration here. In my scenario, it is very important that this document is now filled out digitally and it is signed electronically as well. Now, this is something I cannot do with Adobe Reader because you know it's a reader application. I can annotate, I can send things through, but I cannot fill out this document. 
So because of this, I need another application. Now I do have a, a different application here as well called Adobe Fill and Sign. So I need a way to open up that document inside of Adobe Fill and Sign. So let me just go back to Adobe Acrobat, tap this button here and choose Open In. Now from here, I can take that PDF and I can send this through using uh, Gmail and Messenger or Google Drive. I can copy this to fill and sign, which I'll choose in just a second here. But notice I can even copy this into my Adobe Creative Cloud documents. I can copy this to Dropbox, OneDrive, Outlook. So all of these basic integrations are here. I'll just tap and click copy to Adobe Fill and Sign, which opens up this document inside of Adobe Fill and Sign. So from here, I can start filling out this information. So there's a couple of fields I'm gonna fill out. I'm not gonna cover all of these just for demo purposes. So for example, there's a client field, there's a contact field, there's a date field. Um, I can just quickly zoom in and just tap anywhere and then start typing. Okay, so for example, uh, this is a document that's being signed by Adobe. Again, just 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 click anywhere to add to add fields. You can move fields, you can change the font size, very simple. There's a contact name, which I'll add at the bottom. There's a date field, etc. Now, let me scroll down and uh, let me tap here for print name and title. Now, of course, I need to add my name, but this is something I do on a regular basis. I always have to retype my name. And coincidentally, I have a pretty long surname. And it's because I have three words and there's one letter that's not capitalized. It's a it's a bit of it's a bit of a silly um, last name because I it's it's difficult to type. So I can just tap this person icon here, and what I can do is I can basically fill out information that I need frequently. So for example, my full name is something I need on a regular basis. So I'll just type in or just tap this full name field here, and it'll just put in my full name like this. Of course, you can also add uh, custom fields to this template as well. And uh, there's a date, which I'll not fill out today, but there is a signature field as well. So I'll just click the sign icon at the top of the screen. Um, I can sign this by creating a signature or creating initials, or I can just tap it and then click the sign icon as well, which is the exact same thing. I'll choose create signature. I will sign this document as myself. I'm just gonna do a very generic, there you go, first name, done. And now this has been placed and this has been electronically signed. So this is exactly what I wanted. I filled out this uh, form on my mobile phone. Of course, you can do the exact same thing on your desktop. That way you can actually use your keyboard. But again, in this scenario, uh, mobility was the main purpose of this demo. So I'm keeping this on my phone or my tablet for now. Now, when you're done, you can just hit the done button. And of course it will save your document. So it's here, it's called my NDA document. And um, I need a way to send this through. So of course, from here, I can open it up and I can actually um, email this to my customer or peer or manager or whoever needs this, that's fine. But of course, imagine that you didn't do that yet. Imagine that um, I haven't sent this through yet, but all of a sudden I'm no longer on the train. I'm no longer in need of my mobile device. I'm back on my desktop instead. So now I have the opportunity to continue working on my desktop. And that's something that I wanna show you now. And that is basically how seamless you can go from mobile to desktop. So what I'll do is I'll just look at these options here for my NDA documents. I'll click more and then I'll choose upload to document cloud, which is of course the storage that's made available to you if you have an Adobe uh, document cloud license or an Acrobat license, or if you have a Creative Cloud license. Now, this will start uploading my document. Again, it's called my NDA document. And uh, there's nothing I have to do from now on. It's uploaded, it's in the cloud. You can see the little cloud icon. And now I am ready to transition into my desktop version. Now, returning to my desktop, I'm currently using Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. And the idea is to pick up my workflow uh, where I left it on my phone. So I already used uh, the Adobe Scan application, I used Adobe Reader, and I also used Adobe Fill and Sign. Now, the last thing I did in Adobe Fill and Sign was upload my filled out and signed documents uh, onto the Adobe Document Cloud. So from my desktop, I can just click the Home button and then choose Document Cloud to browse my Document Cloud files. And as you can see, my NDA doc appears here. Now, it is important to understand that all these files here are currently located on Document Cloud. If I click open, it will open up the document 
from document cloud directly. So I do not have to put this locally on my desktop to be able to open this up. If I just click open, it will open up this file directly from Adobe document cloud. There we go. This is the file I currently have. And as you can see at the top, it says my NDA document open from Adobe document cloud. Now remember that here in this scenario, um, there was a step when using the Adobe scan application that said that it was recognizing all of the text. And that's exactly what it did. Because if I just hit the find the command F um, keyboard shortcut on my keyboard or control F on Windows, um, I can just type in certain words. For example, if I type in the word design and I choose next, it will find the word design here inside of my document. Despite the fact that this is still a scanned version, there's just recognized text sitting in the background here, which is really interesting. Now, this also allows me to just come in here and just select text, copy that text, and then just paste that text inside of a, there we go, inside of, uh, for example, Notepad. So I can actually take out text as well, again, which is a huge time saver. There we go. Now, this is the document I currently have, and um, imagine I have to send this document off to somebody else now. Now, what often happens is that people will um, download this document first and then go to their email program, let's say Microsoft Outlook, create a new email, and then attach the document. You have to go and fetch that document first, send it through. That's something I do not have to do because this document is already located in Adobe Document Cloud. So from here, I can just click Send and then choose Attach to Email, which will open up my options. So I can choose to use my Microsoft Outlook email. I'll just click Continue, and this will attach the document to a new email template, and it will also fill out the subject line. And from here, I can send this document through to um, my coworkers as well. Now, keep in mind that if you are opening up different PDFs, for example, PDFs that are not yet on Document Cloud, that is not a problem. For example, if I open up this PDF here, if this is a PDF file that I need to send through to somebody else, again, what a lot of people would do is they would go back to Outlook, create a new um, email, and then they would just click the attach button and try and find that document again. And most of the time, we tend to um, forget where this document is stored. This is not something that you have to worry about, okay? The only thing you do from here is just click the email button click choose send file, click continue to choose, in my case, Microsoft Outlook, and it will automatically, again, create a new email, and I can just send the document through from here. So these little tricks will save you tons of time during, during the day. Um, so just keep in mind that you have all these options available as well. Now, let me show you another interesting technique, which is a feature called compare documents. Now, let me open up these two documents here. Now, these are there we go, let me just quickly open these up like this, cancel this out. Now, these two files are very similar. This is my catalog version one, and I have catalog version two. Now, this is something that happens a lot because you might have a document, version one, version two, version two A, version two B, version two B final, and in the end, you're not really sure what the differences are between one version and the other. Now, just looking at this document for now, um, I'm not really sure what the differences are between this one and this one. Like I'm, I'm jumping from one document to the other. I'm not really seeing any differences here. And that is exactly where the compare documents tool comes in. Now you can find this tool here when you're looking at the tools panel, or of course, when you're inside of your documents, just click here and now just try and find the one that you want. So in this case, we're looking for compare files. Now I'm gonna click compare files. Now by default, Adobe Acrobat will always use the files that you currently have open. So in this case, I have my catalog version one and I have my catalog version two. Um, of course, you can change this to different files as well. And uh, it is important to set various settings. So for example, if this is just a basic brochure, and you would like to compare just the text, just click compare text only. Okay, this means it will ignore everything that involves imagery, whether this is vector-based or uh, actual pictures. Okay, if you deselect this, that it will definitely look at those pictures as well. So it will tell you when a picture is different as well. Let's click compare. 
Now, notice what happens when I do this. I currently have two documents open, but once Adobe Acrobat is done comparing both documents, it will generate a third document for me, which is my comparison document, which is basically, it's a summary of every single change, every single difference that it detected between those two catalogs in this case. So as you can see, I have a comparison report and um, I have 10 changes Apparently, there are three replacements, two insertions, and two deletions detected, and three styling issues. So I can use this PDF as a guide. So when I click go to first page, it will actually start highlighting very specific things. For example, here at the top, it notices that th there's a change in text. For example, it says the beach or the backyard. And here I have the beach or the garden. I didn't notice this change. So it clearly gives me all of these changes here. Okay, moving on to the next change. At the bottom, apparently there's something going on here as well. Let me just quickly zoom into this. Looking at this document here, there seems to be a change as well. So apparently we had a change in dimension. So this is 22 inch while we have 24 inches here. And you can just scroll through these changes here just by clicking the next or previous change uh, interface navigational buttons. You can filter for very specific changes. For example, if you only want to see the text changes, just filter uh, using these options here. Um, and then of course, you can also just choose to hide uh, various changes. So there you have it, compare documents. This has already saved me tons of time. Now, the next topic I would like to discuss with you is how you can share a review and comment with multiple people on the same document. Now, when you look at the tools panel on the left-hand side and scroll down, you'll see there's a send for comments tool. When you click that, multiple options appear at the top of your screen. Now, one of these options is send for shared commenting. Now, this method is really interesting. If you're using a SharePoint subsite, and when all recipients in your workflow have access to that same SharePoint subsite. So typically this is an internal workflow, which is perfect if you want multiple colleagues or other coworkers to comment on a document within your organization. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a setup SharePoint subsite available here for this demo. So I'll just click cancel and I'll choose a different method instead. I'll click send for comments by email instead. Now, the idea is pretty similar. So what I'll do is I'll just use this current PDF and I'll hit the next button and I will add a recipient here. Now, I've already gathered some feedback from multiple people and there's one last person that I would like to give feedback on this document and that is Millie. So I'll just invite Millie to this review and I'll just hit the next button to send this email. You can personalize the message. I won't do that for now. And I'll send the invitation using my default email application, which is Microsoft Outlook. Now, when that person checks her email, you'll see that there's an invitation email for myself. It says, please join the review of, and then the name of my PDF. So from here, I can download that PDF and I can open up that PDF in a program like Adobe Reader. Now, when you open up this PDF, Notice the yellow bar at the top of the PDF. This is new. So what it's doing is it's basically inviting me to comment on this document and then clicking the send comments button, which will compose a new email and then send these comments back to the sender, which is of course also myself in this case. So for now, let me just quickly scroll down to a very specific page. Let's just say this page here and let's add one or two small comments. I might bar this text here and I'll add a post-it note at the top and just say like, please use orange text instead. Now, of course, I am commenting here on the same computer, uh, meaning that my account name is currently being used. So let's just make that clear that this is not, of course, myself, this is Millie in this scenario, let's just change the author name. Now, of course, do note that this is usually done automatically if this person is actually using a different account and a different computer. In this demo, I am using the same demo computer, so I'm just gonna change this author name manually. 
Now I'm done with this, so the first thing I'll do is just click send comments, which will send this email back to, in this case, myself, and uh, I'll send my comments through. Click send, and again, I'll choose my email application. In this case, I will use Gmail. Now, in the meantime, I have received an email from Millie. So I downloaded this PDF attachment and I renamed it and I added Millie's name to the name of the PDF. So now I have multiple files. I have the original document, I have Millie's feedback, I have Linda's feedback, and also a very particular file called an FDF file that I received from my colleague Stan. Now, what you can do is you can just open up the original document and the idea is to collect all information together inside of this PDF. Now the best way to do this is by going into the comment section and then from the top of the options, choose import data file. And from there, I'll select all information that I would like to merge together. So I'll take Millie's document and also take Linda's document and then choose select to import all of the comments. I'll just click okay and Acrobat confirms that I indeed have imported all comments. As you can see, I have comments from both Linda, highlighted in red, and I have Millie's comments as well, all together in the same document. Now also notice that I had an FDF document as well. Now this is a very special type of document. Now in the demo that I just did now, I was using a particular workflow where I'm basically sending back the entire PDF to the sender. Now imagine this is a pretty big PDF, let's say a catalog, a product catalog that consists out of 100 pages. That means that I could be potentially sending back 30 megabytes, 40 megabytes via email, but I might only have a handful of comments. So it feels silly to send back that much data when the only thing I really wanted to share was only the comments. Now what happens is very simple. When you look at your document and when you look at the specific comments that you've made, there is the ability to send back just the comments and not the PDF. To do that, just select the comments that you would like to include in that file. I'm shift, shift select the comments or command or control click these uh, to select multiple ones. Click here in the options again and then choose export all to data file. And this will generate an FDF document. This is a workflow I actually use myself very frequently. So what happens is in the end you'll get a file that looks completely different. So instead of sending back 912 kilobytes or maybe potentially 40 megabytes, instead I'm only sending through this document which is an FDF file which is only 5 kilobytes which is really easy to send back via email. And the way to use this is exactly the same way as what we've done before. So go back to these options, click here, and then choose import data file, and just import that file, just like you would import any other PDF with comments included. I'll choose select, and as you can see, that the comments have been imported now. And if you look at this list, there are a couple of comments here from Stan. So apparently Stan added this here, and added a comment as well, and also added um, a inserted text comment as well. So as you can see, I now have comments from three different people, three different sources, and people sent me these PDFs back just via email or by using the send for commenting button when using Reader, for example, or when using an FDF document. And collecting all of these together is really simple to do. Now let's take a look at another very common scenario, which is where you have a PDF document, but you do not have the original Office document available to you. So in this scenario, I have a document that's a PDF. But when I look at, look at file and then choose properties, you'll see that this PDF was originally created in Microsoft PowerPoint. So what I would like to do is I would like to go back from a PDF version to a PowerPoint version instead. And this is something that is pretty unique to Adobe Acrobat because we have this integration with uh, Microsoft Office documents here, which allows us to reverse engineer Office documents directly from Adobe Acrobat. Now, to make this happen, the only thing that you have to do is click the Export PDF button. 
And from here, I have to specify what I think is the source of the document, or at least the source of what the document was before it was uh, transformed into a PDF document. Now, because I was able to check out the document properties, I know for sure that this was a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. Now, I'll just click Export, and I'll just choose a destination, in this case, my desktop, and then click OK to save this document. Now, what Adobe Acrobat will do now is it will start processing this document and then convert that document into a PowerPoint file that I can open up using Microsoft PowerPoint. So this is what the file looks like. As you can see, I have all of my slides. All the text is live, so the text is not broken up into several chunks. I do have intact paragraphs and text frames, separate images, for example, here. And when you look at other pages, for example, here, as you can see, if I add some text, it even recognizes bullet points and it also recognizes um, numbered lists. And looking at this page here, you can actually see that this is still an original table. So again, this is not an image or not a set of various rectangles and other various shapes. This is a properly defined table that I can use, which is really, really cool. Now, keep in mind that you, you can do the exact same thing if you want to reverse engineer PDFs back to say Microsoft Word or Excel, and you have that functionality available not only when you're using Adobe Acrobat for the desktop, but when you use the PDF services, for example, by opening up the web browser and navigating to documents.adobe.com, remember that you have PDF services available in your subscription as well, meaning that you can basically um, convert these PDFs back to original Microsoft Office documents from any web browser. The only thing you need to do is just go to this page, log in using your Adobe ID, and then click Export PDF, and you will have the exact same user experience and exact same user interface as well. And then optionally, if you are only using your mobile device, and if somebody sent you a PDF, you can even do the exact same thing from the free Adobe Reader mobile application. Now let's talk about document security. I'm sure you're all familiar with password protection when you're using a PDF, but let's talk about document security within the PDF document itself. Now in this scenario, I'm just looking at a, a generic employee agreement. So imagine that I have confidential information here inside of this document, and for some reason, you have to disclose this document to the general public or to anybody else. So what you can do is there's a way to um, anonymize certain information and then redact sensitive information from this document. Now to get started with this, I can use the tools on the right hand side of my screen. And uh, if you're not really sure what to use or what to look for, just type in generic words because you do not have to type in the literal name of the option or the feature you're looking for. Just type in something like the word remove. Now when you type in the word remove, it will actually suggest all the tools inside of Adobe Acrobat that have something to do with uh, removal. Okay, so for example, I have um, the deletion options, I have encryption options, I have actions, um, and I have redaction options, which is basically what I was looking for. So I have a redaction option here, there's a redaction option there. I'll just click redact, and it says clearly, permanently delete sensitive text, graphics, or hidden data, and especially that last category is very important. Now, when I click Redact, it will display all of the properties and available tools at the top of the screen. It is really simple to use. The only thing you do is you just click Mark for Redaction and then choose Text and Images, okay? So it clearly gives me all the steps. So step number one, Mark for Redaction. Number two, Apply the Redaction. So I'll just click OK, and now it's up to me. So if I have certain areas within this text that need to be redacted, just click and drag with your mouse to redact this information. And you can actually see a preview of it when you hover over this with your mouse. If you have certain images that you would like to redact, just again, just click and drag this area on top of this image. And again, this image will disappear once you apply these redactions yourself. Now, just clicking and dragging across certain paragraphs or individual words is one thing, but what if you have a very specific word or a specific terminology in mind that you do not wish to share with somebody else? There's another way to handle all of this. For example, you can click find text and then just type in the word you're looking for here on the left-hand side. For example, if the word company 
was an issue for some reason. I'm just, again, this is just a demo um, scenario. Just click search and remove text and it will actually find various instances of the word company. And uh, the only thing you do, you just click check all to select all of these instances. And then you click mark checked results for redaction, which will do exactly that. So this of course will make sure that you do not miss one instance of the information that you're trying to remove here. Now, when you're done with this, don't, don't forget to actually apply these redactions first. Now, when I click apply, it will tell me that I am about to permanently remove all content that has been marked for redaction. I'll just click OK because, of course, that was the whole point. It will ask me to also find and remove hidden information. And this is something that a lot of people um, do not know. And that is that there might be sensitive information hidden in the metadata of your PDF. So what we'll do now is if I click yes, Adobe Acrobat will try and find the same redacted information that is hidden in the PDF and it will redact that information as well. So I will just click yes and it will start looking for specific information. It did find very specific information here that is also clear for redaction. I'll just click remove and then click OK. There we go to remove those parameters from the metadata as well. And now it is done. Of course, to finalize all of this, don't, don't forget to save your documents, put this in a separate folder, and then click Save. There we go. Now this document has been secured and there is no way to retrieve this document. And even if you want to open this up inside of Photoshop or any other image adding software or PDF viewer, I promise you this information is gone forever. And with that, we've come to the end of today's webinar. I hope you learned a few new things today and that you'll try some of these techniques yourself the next time the opportunity presents itself. If you have any questions, be sure to get in touch with your local Adobe account executive or local reseller. Thank you for watching and goodbye.